All right, everybody. Uh, hi, welcome to the IPFS Implementer Sync for uh, November 9th. Uh, if you're here, uh, add your name to the attendees list. Um, and I guess let's start with uh, some implementation updates. Um, Lytle, do you want to take it away? I can, but I also do the IPFS. Ah, that's true. Okay, <laughs> sure. Uh, all right, Hugo, you want to start with implementation updates or at least cover Kubo? So we shipped the uh, version 24, the 24 of Kubo. And at the moment, wait, I don't have the page open right now, you know? <laughs> I was like, sorry. All right. Yeah, so we have version 0.24 of Kubo and Boxo 15 with that. Uh, the main new feature, we, we don't have, that, that was a lighter release for us. So I don't think there's a huge new feature. Uh, so there are a few things. So there's WebRTC Direct as an experimental transport uh, that's been added um, coming from Gilded P2P. So this means that your, your node can be reachable from uh, a browser uh, as long as it's public, even if the node does not support web transport yet, uh, even if the browser doesn't support web transport yet, which is a few of them, uh, notably a few of the mobile browsers and, and Safari. Um, so yeah, that gives you sort of more, more options for connectivity. Um, um, and... I want to add something um, yeah. because I was tripped on that. This is not doing browsers to uh, to Kubo hole punching yet. The, your Kubo node needs to be public reachable either with uh, UPnP or literally by having a public IP. Um, the hole punching between browsers and Kubo is going to come later, uh, but that needs uh, another protocol, which is also based on WebRTC. Correct. So this is basically you can use this as a, this is more like a web transport alternative uh, than doing the full WebRTC ice hole punching stuff. Um, the other is uh, thanks to some work that, that Hector has done. Uh, there's support for content blocking, so you can basically add in a a list of uh, you know paths, blocks, etc. that you would like to not have your node download, even if you say publicly expose it to downloading things like a gateway, um, which should make things uh, easier for um, operators that do tend to expose things publicly and want to limit their, uh, you know, sort of dealing with, you know, takedown notices and that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, thanks to everybody who who pushed on the, the specs work uh, and implementation work for all of that. Um, I guess I'll cover uh, Bifrost related things. Um, we have some new domains. Um, so there's this repo of Bifrost community that handles some public infrastructure and allows you know people to engage on what's going on there. Uh, but notably, um, two new domains being added for uh, trustless gateway and delegated routing. So trustless gateway is instead of all the functionality that a gateway provides, just do things that return uh, data you can verify. So blocks, cars, IPNS records. Um, these are, it's both sort of less, less work for the gateways, but also uh, because you can't use those, th those to return like HTML or JPEGs or videos directly, uh, it means that the probability of them being used in things like phishing and whatever goes down, which means the gateway URL is also um, much more protected for you to be able to embed in your applications and know that like you're not going to run into some problem as a result of it. Um, so it should make it easier for people to run public public trustless gateways, right? Because they'll have less they'll have less stuff to deal with, less notice less takedown notices coming their way. Um, while still providing, you know, utility to to their users, um, and delegated routing allows you to have someone else do the routing and you know DHT and IPNI lookups and whatever for you, while you do all the fetching and processing of the bytes uh, yourself, which again is even like cheaper and easier to run than running a gateway, um, and also allows you to deal with things like, you know higher censorship resistance and things like that, because no one has to, only the parties that are actually 
want to serve you the blocks will actually serve you the blocks, right? You're not relying on some middleman to hold and process data for you in the, in, in the meanwhile. Uh, and uh, we've made some progress with uh, Rainbow, which is a uh, Go-based uh, IPFS gateway implementation um, that is um, sort of is more optimized for just being a gateway than using something like like Kubo as a gateway. Um, and so far, things uh, look uh, look promising there. Um, we have some users that got really excited and started testing early. We're hoping to get this rolled out. Um, uh, to dweb.link and ipfs.io uh, in the relatively near future. Uh, and you can sort of see uh, the activity in the repo for more info. Uh, trying to think if there, are, I don't know if we have any Helia representatives here to share there, but I think at least one thing they have is, um, I think the next version the next release version of Helio will make it easier to download from uh, trustless gateways uh, so that if you don't want to do the peer-to-peer -peer fetching work in the browser, you can sort of elect a few gateways to fetch the data from, but you don't have to trust those gateways that they served you the correct bytes. All right. Uh, anyone else? Any other implement implementers have something they'd like to share? All right. If not, I'll hand it off to Lettle for IPIPs. Yeah. Uh, and Rainbow passes a gateway conformance test, so you get the same behavior uh, like, as you do in a Kubo desktop or Brave. So that's the important part. Um, yeah. Uh, IPIPs corner a bit uh, busy, uh, busy last two weeks. Uh, we did not. Uh, are there any ratifications yet? Uh, but uh, the compact denialist format specification, which is added in IPP 383, the implementation shipped in Kubo 024, uh, the, the 024, the only reason it's still open is just uh, final editorials. Um, I believe we want to uh, uh, make sure the uh, examples in the uh, plugin that does the blocking um, are in the released version and we will link to that released version. So uh, it's kind of like a good time for final uh, pass on typos and uh, clarifications, but I feel the next time we have this meeting, this will be ready for a final review and ratification. Um, the second one, uh, 445 uh, is, uh, one uh, by Hugo, um, ability to ask a gateway for the metadata of a DAG and skip the row, da row leaves uh, data in the row blocks. Um, and we hope to have uh, implementations uh, in next or next next Kubo version. Uh, the nice property of this is it enables uh, light clients to fetch um, all the information required for verifying hashes in a single request to some trustless gateway, but the actual user data that's stored in a UnixFS um, DAG with uh, role leaves, that could be fetched from various sources. It could be gateway, it could be trustless gateway, it could be the serialized response from a regular gateway, or it could be just a regular HTTP server uh, with range requests. Um, so it's pretty interesting feature that will enable those use cases. Um, uh, UnixFS specs, uh, no, uh, we, yeah, no, not much progress, uh, at least from my end on this one. We want to uh, land it by the end of the year, but uh, given like uh, uh, lab week and other activities, uh, probably we'll circle back to this one after. Um, and there was some feedback on the uh, IP4 uh, 3.1, which is opt-in, uh, ability to uh, send some metadata after a car stream. Um, uh, 
I've uh, provided some feedback there. I suspect there's like no no hard blockers there. The only open question is um, that the author of the IP uh, uh, asked, uh, should that metadata be prefixed with a CID just to allow detection if the metadata itself gets truncated? Um, I guess that's uh, that that that's the high level uh, comment from my end. Uh, there are other comments on on the thing, uh, but it's, it's progressing. Uh, and the last one, which I mentioned uh, uh, during the previous call, um, a header which enables client to force uh, path behavior on the subdomain gateways. Um, that feels like it's not not, not feasible because uh, of uh, the way HTTP caching may negatively impact the origin isolation in the web browser context. The details are under the link if anyone is interested, but it sounds like it's not the path we can take, at least not safely at this time. Uh, still, it, the idea is welcome. It's possible that we missed some way of making it work, but it sounds like we won't be able to uh, to do it uh, and the rest is on the board i guess that's that's more or less my summary of ipips if anyone wants to bring up uh something more or want to elaborate on what i said uh feel free to take over um i guess just it, of of these i suspect uh you know this one or the the greater set of things around let's call it web seeds like behavior where we're separating out the for specifically for things like you know like file you know like files or directories splitting out the uh the file bytes from the like tree or proof bytes seems like it'd be very useful um still needs to what make its way into uh into various implementations but if this is something that interests you uh then um yeah come hang out in the ipfs implementers uh channel uh on file on slack and uh we'll we'll chat more there um if there are enough people we'll we'll we can set up a working group to figure out how we want to move these things forward um but I feel like I've seen in a number of different places people trying to push on on this, whether it's through, you know, this kind of behavior, whether it's through like, you know, large, large blocks, uh, you know, Blake, Blake three, comp, et cetera, or um, or for Unix FS files like this. All right. Uh, anyone else have anything on the agenda? I see this is here, but I also don't see any representatives to talk about this. So it's gonna move that. Um, maybe one note is that uh, a number of people who work on various IPFS implementations are gonna be uh, at uh, various events next week. Uh, so if you are um, if you are in Istanbul next week at one of the, at, you know, uh, Protocol Labs is Lab Week or Ethereum's Dev Connect or one of the areas around there, uh, come say hi. Um, and uh, there'll also be some people at uh, the uh, version of Dev Connect that is in Prague. Uh, so if you're around uh, and you'd like to chat about IPFS and where it goes and uh, how uh, implementers can uh, help you get where you're going, uh, then, um, yeah, come hang out again in the IPFS implementers channel and say hi. We also have a, an IPFS Connect uh, in Istanbul to 16. So they dedicated to IPFS. Yes, yes, uh, absolutely. Thank you. And I think, uh, I think the, the Fission folks are running that. So thank you to them for, for putting all that together. Um, there's also, I think, a for people interested in loop P2P, there's a loop P2P day as well uh, in Istanbul. So there's like a whole lot of events that are going on uh, in Istanbul over the next week or so. Um, 
So if you happen to be around there, there's there's a lot to check out. All right, anything else on people's minds or uh, otherwise, uh, we'll give people some time back. All right, going once, going twice, going three times, sold. All right. Thanks all. See you next time. Bye.